and welcome back to Eurojana 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and today we're going to be talking about the second part of basically a two-part subset of this 120 video series, uh, the logical fallacy of composition, which is very related to the logical fallacy of division, which we just spoke about in the last video. If you haven't seen that video, I encourage you either uh, immediately go watch it or watch it right after you watch this one, because they're very, very and so, what is the fallacy of composition? On a formal level, or informal, I guess, as this is an informal fallacy, Not sure if that's coming through. Okay, but uh, all parts of object O or system O have property P. Therefore, O uh, has property P itself. So, as you can kind of guess from the last video, there's going to be situations where this is certainly not true, uh, and it's the flip side of the fallacy of division. It's uh, Know, what is true of its, uh, a system's parts are not necessarily true of the whole. So, for example, going back to the t-shirt here, you know, every part of you know, the, uh, or actually no, going, going, going kind of even further back, uh, in, in this t-shirt there is uh, hydrogen uh, and oxygen as part of the water molecules in this t-shirt, but uh, hydrogen is not necessarily wet on its own. It is a gas. Uh, if you were to uh, hold it uh, in a balloon or something, you would not observe that it is wet. Uh, and likewise, water, or sorry, uh, oxygen is not uh, wet. Certainly there's oxygen that we're breathing all the time, uh, and it is not uh, wet um, by any stretch of the imagination. And so you could conclude from that, since uh, water is just hydrogen and oxygen, uh, that water is also not wet. Of course, that is ridiculous. If there's anything in the universe that's wet, it would be water. And so this would just be an example of uh, a, a, a combination of things that uh, doesn't have the property uh, or, or has extra properties uh, that um, do not necessitate uh, kind of viewing in, in those terms. So here, here's another example. And, and all of these, uh, practically everywhere that I could find uh, descriptions of this fallacy, uh, were almost entirely uh, done in terms of examples. So see if you can kind of see the common element here. Um, all the cells in your body uh, are aquatic, so they, they survive almost entirely in a, an environment of water. Uh, they're surrounded by water. Uh, they float around in water. They can survive their entire lives uh, in, in kind of this aqueous uh, solution of, of that's mostly water. And you are made of these cells. So therefore, you should, just, you should be just fine if you're submerged in some kind of an aqueous fluid. Uh, like water, and just left there, uh, perfect. Of course, that's not true, because unless you're Harry Houdini or something, uh, you get put in a bucket of water deep enough, you're going to drown very quickly. Um, so that that is just another example of where, even though the parts of you are, are just fine in a uh, kind of self-contained environment like that, you would be not okay with the same self-contained environment. And so, uh, in, in general, there, there, there are going to be these, these kinds of uh, uh, components where the, this is not the case. But it's, it's worth noting, just as we did in the last video, that there are some systems uh, where the, the, the property involved distributes uh, in a way that can be generalized. And so, for example, you could say that every atom in my t-shirt is made of matter, and then therefore the t-shirt itself is made of matter. This is actually a valid use of composition. Uh, because of the property of matter itself, that when you have more of it, uh, the, the larger object continues to be uh, made of matter, uh, no matter how much more you, you add to it, for larger and larger objects. You can apparently study this kind of uh, relationship between uh, things that can be distributed in, in fields like group theory and in other areas of mathematics, although those are kind of beyond the scope of this particular video. 
Uh, the division of labor and uh, market activity is another example of this, where uh, not everyone can take advantage of uh, all opportunities that present themselves to a market or to a country. Uh, I, I might be able to see that there is a space for a lemonade stand on the way home, uh, but there not everyone is going to have the same insight and the same realization. And so even though I can invest in a you know, couple planks of wood and a jar of lemonade uh, to make that stand happen uh, and profit from it, it is not true that everyone has that opportunity and that the whole system has this opportunity as well. Uh, so that, uh, again, there, there, there are going to be situations where uh, the, 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 the group has more potential uh, or, or different potentials than individuals specifically. Uh, let's see. I, I, in general, but just as in the last video, there, there's going to be a difference in scale uh, where uh, the uh, what, what especially in, in, in systems where uh, large uh, aspects of the system uh, can work together in a way different uh, than the individuals themselves. Uh, so, for example, a, 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 um, a network of human beings working in unison can often accomplish more than the individuals themselves. So, uh, if the individuals have the, 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 the property that it takes a long time for them to move a bucket uh, from one end of a, uh, you know, from the source of water to where the fire is, uh, it may not be necessarily true that this, the group of them has the same uh, restriction on uh, how many buckets they can move. Uh, working together, you can move much uh, more water uh, much quicker uh, than working alone as individuals. Uh, from the even from the Christian standpoint, uh, if the way that they interpret and view uh, the concept of sin, and this is something that I've you know, kind of been guilty of myself, uh, where uh, you, you can kind of view uh, everything enjoyable as sinful, and so they'll, they'll they'll kind of view it as quote when I sin it's fun, so I'm going to have fun sinning all of you know my life and in their particular perspective, it, it well into their afterlife. Of course, in their particular perspective, this won't be the case, uh, that there will be consequences for it, but there, there's even, e even if you don't particularly agree with their concept of sin, uh, the, the idea that you can just uh, ignore consequences and have fun and enjoy your, your life uh, on every single level, at every single moment, to you know, turn up uh, and to, to, to party constantly, uh, eventually you're going to crash and the drugs that you do are eventually going to fry your brain and you're go eventually going to have the mental capacity of a two-year-old or a four-year-old and there won't be anything left of you. So it's worth considering the consequences of your actions even when you're having a good time. So uh, it, it's also related to uh, going back to the Euthydemus uh, video uh, where you know the, the, the sense that all things that I own that are fathers have this property uh, that kind of I isn't maintained. So uh, again, it's, it's just kind of another example where this particular fallacy exhibits itself. Uh, I, I also think that there's a relationship here uh, to the axiom of choice, although that is a topic for another video at another time. Uh, so, in general, in conclusion, we, we, we have these two ways of viewing systems. Uh, viewing systems is on, on the level of trees, and viewing systems on the level of forests. And as, we, as we've discussed in the forest versus trees video, uh, it not only are the two different, uh, but uh, there, there's going to be relationships between the two. There, there are going to be relationships between parts of systems that aren't necessarily true of the system of the whole, and, and vice versa. In this case, that there's going to be uh, really things that are true of the system of at a whole that are not necessarily true of its parts. And so it, it's worth considering, anytime you're describing one or the other, whether or not the property does di distribute in the correct way, and whether or not you're in either the fallacy of composition or division when you're doing so. So, um, do we have any questions from the audience today? No? Okay. Well, uh, as usual, uh, if there are any questions or if you'd like more examples of this particular logical fallacy, feel free to request them anywhere where this video is posted. Uh, I'll try to keep an eye out for them. Uh, and uh, hopefully you enjoy. See you next video.